Laser cutting has a range of interesting properties. One of them is the fact that laser cutting is very fast, conceptually allowing users to create very large objects. We have created a software system called Cube, which we use to produce everything you see in the shot. Cube is based on two main ideas. First, Cube affords closed box structures, which are very sturdy, often capable of taking hundreds of kilograms of a load, such as the chair I'm sitting on right now. Second, we propose a new interaction paradigm in which users create 3D objects by stacking simple primitive elements on top of each other, such as this little cube I'm holding here. Let me show you how this works at the example of this picture frame. As you can see, any experience with cube starts with a little box falling into the scene. We call this a boxel, and it's very sturdy, capable of withstanding hundreds of kilograms of compression load. Let me make another one. I go to the menu and say add boxel and I click on my stage. Let me do this one more time, but this time I'm going to click on the existing geometry here. As you can see, the new boxel aligns itself perfectly with the previous one and both merge into one. This is a very important step because now the resulting geometry has big plates that extend across the entire geometry, making the result very sturdy. Let me complete my picture frame. This time I'm double clicking the option, making the option sticky, so I can produce a lot of boxels very quickly. Here's my picture frame. So I'm essentially done. Here's my picture frame, here's the picture I want to uh, display, and uh, all I need to do is decorate it now by applying a handful of different decorations to it. So here is a, just a hexagonal pattern. Um, let me go and upload a picture of my daughter. Here it is. And now I can display this here. So I could do this for the remaining four sides and when I'm happy with my design, I can go to export, make this, set the curve settings and the size of material sheets I have available and say export. Another approach to creating non-rectilinear objects is to start with a non-rectilinear primitive. Here I'm starting with a pyramid boxel and I'm going to the menu, I'm selecting tetrahedron and I'm attaching that to my pyramid. As before, both geometries unite and by adding a second tetrahedron, I'm getting this interesting looking geometry, which is actually very hard to fabricate without the software. I clone the piece. And after fabricating this, I get these two interesting puzzle pieces. Ah, it's a tetrahedron puzzle. Let me show you a slightly more complex example. This is a robot figurine created by one of the participants of our user study in a 60 minute session. As you can see, the participant creates most of the geometry using the add voxel tool together with push-pull and the occasional application of the clone tool. The round tool allows us creating some more stylish edges here. Once the object has been fabricated, I can start assembling it by injecting boxels into boxel-shaped holes. This can be done in a variety of ways, allowing me to pose the figurine. By adding a couple of additional elements to the mix, I've created a simple construction kit here, which allows me to create a goose, a chiclet, or this warrior statue. By affording closed box structures, Cube is very well suited for creating very large objects, such as this table here. At the same time, only very few laser cutters are large enough to allow cutting objects this size in one piece. To still allow users of smaller equipment to create objects this size, Cube allows breaking down designs like this one here into a larger number of smaller cells. I'm holding one of these cells here, and as you can see, this interface here connects two adjacent cells, and then the finger joints allow both of these sides to connect into the connection here, which are essentially two butterfly joints. Even though the objects you see in this shot are made from four millimeters of so very thin plywood, they're still quite sturdy as a result.